We're going to just get started again uh, really quickly. I want to introduce the um, student panel. So that's Mike Ellison on the end there, uh, Scotty LaRocco, Gina Stavrakakis, and Ira Wibisono. Sorry if I messed that up. <laughs> um, so I guess just to get started, we can maybe have you guys each introduce yourself and about your program, and then um, we'll go through the list there first. So you want to start, Mike? my second year. There you go. And, uh, I'll, I'll end up graduating uh, next spring. So I'm focusing on corporate finance. Uh, originally I'm from Seattle. I uh, moved down here for the Navy about five years ago, so I'm active duty in the military. And um, I'm in the MBA program to transition out of the military in about a year. So um, let's see. That's about it. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, they told you my name is Scotty LaRocco. I'm from Chicago originally. I started here August of 2012, so I'm in the final throes of my program here. I'm an IMBA student and uh, study corporate finance, and that's one of the things I really liked about this program was that you could still kind of have an international focus education and leverage that with another skill, which was what I was looking for. And um, yeah, I'm a little nervous to graduate. Uh, it's kind of terrifying that I'll never be a student again in my life, I don't think, unless I go for a PhD or something, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. Um, yeah, that's it. Hi, everybody. I'm Gina Stavrakakis. Uh, I also, Scotty and I are in the same cohort. I'm also graduating in May. Um, and I also was uh, part of this event last year, and two years ago I was sitting where you were, um, so I really enjoy being able to come back and kind of tell everybody about my own experience here. Uh, I am originally from Utah, from the Salt Lake City area, uh, but I was living in San Diego before I started the program. Um, and I am doing a supply chain concentration. Uh, like Scotty, I'm a little scared to graduate because I've been loving the student life. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Um, I'm also, uh, one of the things that drew me to USD was all of the international opportunities because I think business, uh, regardless of what it is you want to focus on or where you want to go, what you want to do, it's global, it's international. And that is one of the things that drew me to the program is that it has that focus. So welcome everybody and I'm glad to be here. So hello, my name is Ira. Um, I was born in Indonesia, raised in the Netherlands, and then moved here two years ago to start this MBA program. Uh, I'm a second year full-time MBA. Uh, prior to starting the MBA program, I work at DHL. And last summer, I interned at the Simer, a semiconductor equipment company. And after my summer internship was over, I've been given the opportunity to continue work for them. And that's what I've been doing now, uh, finishing my second year while working part-time over there. It's really exhausting, so I'm so excited that I'm going to graduate. Sorry, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bittersweet. Yeah. Little bittersweet. <laughs> okay, and then uh, maybe we can start back with Mike again, kind of talk about uh, the different topics. I think you're here to talk about the clubs and the student life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, just a quick poll of the audience here. So who is an evening MBA student? Anyone? And full-time? IMBAs? Anyone? Oh, I guess that's the same now. So, okay. I just wanted to figure out uh, who we're addressing here. So um, what I'm going to talk to you guys about is uh, student involvement, so clubs, organizations specifically. Uh, I started the Management Consulting Association in the MBA program here about a year ago. Uh, the Genesis of that was when I started last spring, I, I probably, like many of you, didn't know what I wanted to do. So I looked at all the different fields. I looked at finance, supply chain, and uh, in one of the beginning classes you'll have uh, is a strategy class. So in that class, I realized uh, my prior skill set in the military really uh, sets me up well for a job doing management consulting, which what I liked about that was problem solving, uh, working in small teams on, on projects and seeing the impact of what you do uh, in a short period of time. So uh, that led me to want to start a program or, or an organization, uh, and there wasn't one. So what's great about USD is you have an opportunity to have a big impact on uh, the organization here. So we have a few clubs. One is the MCA. Uh, we have Net Impact. We have Women in Business, which Gina can tell you a little more about. Uh, we also have a military MBA veterans organization, which I also run. And um, so there's only about five right now, but 
each one of those groups gives an opportunity to uh, explore different areas and, and really work on skills that you're not necessarily going to get in the classroom. So one of the things uh, while I was starting this, uh, the MCA that I realized is you're going to learn a lot in the classroom. You're going to learn about finance, you're going to learn about supply chain, but you don't always learn about the things that are really going to get you a job, which is your interview skills. So one of the things we, we've really worked on in the MCA is uh, fit interview preparation and case interview preparation and, and really looking at uh, some of those skill sets that you have to work on on your own. So uh, working with clubs and organizations uh, in, the, in the little free time you have is an opportunity to, to build those skills. And additionally, it's one of those things that, you know, it was, it was a strategic move on my part to be in part of these organizations and one that I would recommend you look into early on because it's one of those things that will set you apart uh, from competition and when you're looking for a job. You have your, obviously your history, work history, your, your school, um, and we're all going to have that, but the things that might give you a little edge over the competition if you're applying for a job will be, you know, leadership positions or volunteer positions. So, so look for those opportunities, and um, I think in the program here you'll you'll have plenty of them. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions about those uh, organizations, the two I uh, am part of specifically are the Management Consulting Association and the MBA Veterans Organization. And uh, I can speak to some of the events a little bit later, but um, that's just a, a brief overview. So. Thanks. All right, you guys, I'm going to tell you more about the international opportunities. Uh, as someone who's taken advantage of pretty much every opportunity to go abroad through the course of this program, I think I've spent a total now of eight months out of the 21, maybe even more than that, um, in different countries. Um, so basically, there's pretty much three ways to spend your time abroad. Uh, what we do is during the intercessions, which is the month of January, and then summer intercession is June. I know it's of June. later. Oh yeah, no, it's June. Uh, basically, like between semesters, uh, we offer opportunities to go abroad in the form of what we call international practicums, and what those are is real life consulting projects for real companies in other countries. Um, basically, I when I did this, I did it last January. I spent the month in Rio de Janeiro, in Brazil, and we worked for a tech company and did a basically a whole business plan for them uh, doing, uh, doing consulting as far as the finances, the budgeting, pretty much everything. And the, I mean, the guys were Brazilian guys. I mean, they spoke English and stuff, but you're working for a Brazilian company, which was an excellent experience. So that would last two weeks. In addition to that, you can spend the whole month uh, abroad and you can take a class as well. We do offer two week classes in different locations overseas. Just to rattle off a few of the locations, aside from Rio de Janeiro, there was uh, Buenos Aires, uh, Shanghai, uh, Gina went to India, India yeah, Delhi. Uh, we did one in the summer in June, I believe that was in Europe. Was it in Germany? Turkey and Germany? Mm -hmm. Berlin okay. and Istanbul. Berlin and Istanbul, correct. Um, so you can basically choose either spend two weeks of that time doing the practicum and or the class or the full month and do the practicum and the class. And, you know, they'll kind of help you set this up based on the way you want to do it. Uh, the next way to go abroad is spend a full semester overseas. Uh, it's kind of like a study, uh, study abroad situation, like some of you I'm sure probably did when you were undergraduates. Uh, I just got back from Italy. I was in Milan all fall. And uh, as an international MBA student, we have a requirement where we have to learn our, uh, intermediate level proficiency in a foreign language. Now, for some of you guys, that's probably nothing. Uh, for some of the American students, that can be a little challenging because we don't really grow up speaking other languages in the house. So I spoke a tiny bit of Italian, and that was part of the reason I wanted to uh, spend my time in Italy. And I think the really neat thing with this was, you know, and I was around a lot of undergraduates too in that time because it was a huge university in Milan. And it's important to me to do this experience when you're a little bit older and wiser because you'd see those younger people and. You know, they just wanted to go out and party, and they wanted to hop from city to city and just go party. And, you know, what, what this, when you're older and more mature, when you go, you learn there's a lot more to travel than just partying and going to places. Uh, I really never left Italy the whole time I was there, despite the opportunities. I looked at it as a cultural experience. I was actually able to track down a lot of my family history in Sicily, you know, aside from the academics. So... You know, what I like to say is that, you know, some of you guys might come in here and start and you're used to traveling like tourists 
And there's a very clear distinction between tourists and travelers. And once you're finished uh, here, at least from my experience, you're a traveler. Uh, you know, you're not, you'll still do some touristy things, you'll go on tours, that's fine. But what you find is that, you know, when you live in these places and you work in these places, it's not, you're faced with challenges that you don't have when you just go somewhere as part of a tour group. You know, you really are forced to learn little bits and pieces of languages. You know, even in Brazil, I, I had to learn little bits of Portuguese just to get by. Um, you know, you're taking public transportation every day. You're living like a Brazilian would live. And to me, that's a very important experience. And it's something that can truly enhance your resume. It's at the very top of mind, uh, just how I've lived and worked in these places. And to me, it shows a certain level of I don't know, gumption to you know, go out there and put yourself out there, because it's, uh, it's out of your comfort zone. Uh, and then the final thing you can do uh, to meet your abroad requirements is you can pursue an internship overseas. I was actually able to get one in Singapore over the summer. So I lived in Singapore in the summer, and then went straight to Italy. And again, it's just another experience to work for a company overseas and just build that aspect of your resume. And to me, that was very important because like Gina said, and you know, we can't emphasize this enough, you know, business is global. Even if you work for a company and it might seem like their only operations and market is in the US, it's not. I, everything revolves around the global aspect of business. So to me, and this is a big reason I chose this school, was that the opportunities to go overseas and build that and build my cultural awareness and build my communication skills with uh, other cultures was second to none in my opinion. So um, if any of you have any more questions about my personal experiences, I'd be glad to share them. I'm pretty much always uh, talking about them anyways. If you want to hear me speak bad Italian, I'd be happy to. Uh, I tend to do that to the annoyance of everyone too all the time. So um, yeah, feel free to hit me up after this. He was, you were just out there on the phone with some of the Italians, huh? <laughs> yeah, Scotty walked Very in nice. on his phone and he's out there, ah, blah, do, you know, and you can kind of see it's, uh, you know, it's part of his. Uh, <laughs> so Ira and I are both going to talk uh, about some of the aspects through career services that are available to you as a student. So I want to start with a question. Anybody, don't be shy, you can answer for realsies. Who is looking for a job? Who wants to go back to the MBA program because you want to get a better job or a promotion? Yeah, I think that's pretty much, that's, that's one of the biggest reasons. Um, and w career services at USD um, has been a great thing for me. Um, I know there, some of you are probably looking for a career change. Uh, some of you maybe are getting an MBA because you want to get a promotion in your current job or maybe in the current field you're working in. Uh, I am a testament that it works. My career prior to this was, I worked for Nordstrom for about 11 years in a few different positions, and um, I wanted to get completely, I needed kind of something on my resume that was really on the other end of the spectrum, and uh, I have that now. I'm um, a buyer at Pratt & Whitney, so I'm working in aerospace. What? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> also, I'm a, a buyer, so I worked in operations before, but I needed some supply chain experience. So, and really, that is that was in not a total, complete result of, but really, um, I got the job as a result of uh, my connection with career services and the opportunities through them. So, a couple of the things, um, just kind of details of uh, things that are offered through career services. We have uh, an amazing mentoring program. So, career services will. Uh, they have a pool of people who are local professionals uh, that they will connect you with that has, uh, that's in the area that you're, that you're interested in. And then also they, they try to match you up personally so that you have, you know, so you can have a personal connection with this person. My mentor uh, was, and still is, uh, she was at the time the vice president of supply chain at Jack in the Box. Um, now she's moved on to a different opportunity, but she and I are still connected. Um, and these are people who are who have experience in the career that you're interested in. They have network connections. Um, they can teach you and mentor you in a number of things. So it's it's an amazing thing that we get. And also. As a side note, I have a friend who's in an MBA program at a top 10 school, I won't say where, um, but you know, we talk a lot, and I was, we talk a lot about you know, MBA program in general, and I would talk to her about the mentoring program and my mentors that I've, that I've acquired through that, and she, after a few conversations, she's like, what, 
what is that? How does it work? They don't even have that at the school where she is. So this is a really another great opportunity at USD. There are 60 people in her cohort. Here we have, you know, in each of our cohorts we have 20. I know it's going to be combined in a little different, but collectively the same amount of people. Um, the opportunity is there for you to form a sort of a personal connection and relationship with people in career services. Um, our Kara and career services, actually, I was in Hong Kong at, on our class this January. She found out about a job that she, this Pratt & Whitney job, she emailed me. I picked up the phone and called the woman who's now my manager. We interviewed, before I landed back in the US, I had the job offer. So it really was, you know, I made the relationship with Kara. She, know, she knows me, she knew what I was looking for, and she funneled that job to me and does that, you know. They, that is what they're there for. Um, another thing is the uh, MBA career fairs that take place, their national career fairs. There are, I think, five or six large ones uh, that you can visit. I went to Nabimba, which was in Houston last year. There were 300 employers there and 10 or 11,000 MBAs that were there looking for internships and jobs. So it's an amazing opportunity. We went, I think there were like seven or eight of us that went. Um, just for two or three days, went to the convention, you get the opportunity to make connections and have face time with employers. You get to connect directly with uh, the, um, the talent acquisition managers or the HR people or um, people who are in your um, function that you're looking for. And so that is a great way uh, to expand your network. And really, the networking is what the MBA is all about. That's what's gonna help you get the job. So there's that, and then we have multiple networking opportunities on campus aside from that, and I think um, we can all talk to that, and I think Ira might talk about that as well. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm, why I chose USD? Well, um, I'm gonna start by I actually, um, decided to start my MBA program because I needed a break from my work. I was doing well at work and then um, I have uh, career opportunities, but I needed a break. And I think everyone um, feels the same way along the way, that uh, at some point you think you're doing very well, but you just hit that point that you want a break. Um, I chose USD because of uh, three main things. One, the course. So the courses that they offer at USD are the courses that I want to learn. I want to learn how to negotiate better. They have negotiation class. I want to learn about, uh, I want to relearn about the ba basic and supply chain. They have all these amazing supply chain classes. Little that people know that USD actually has one of uh, the best supply chain institute in the West Coast. And who doesn't love the sun in uh, West Coast? Um, and then, also, the size of the class itself make it possible to form the connection. That's the first reason. But then the second reason is, so you might not know this, but as one professor said it to me over and over again, education is the only commodity that people try to get as little as possible for the amount of money they pay. So the knowledge that the professor knows you and you know the professor will force you to come to class. It doesn't matter how motivated you are in the start of your semester. Along the way, you will, yeah, I don't want to go to class. I'm too lazy. But knowing that the professor knows your name, it's going to make you to come to class. It's going to make you learn. Um, so, and then the second one, um, the career services. So I... I thought I knew everything about like, yeah, how to write my CV, how to establish connection, things like that. I was wrong. Um, so they have, a, it's called career and professional development uh, class. Uh, it's usually every Friday for the full-time MBA. And full-time MBA, I'm not sure about the evening MBA though, uh, but I'm sure it's there. Um, so basically they will tell you um, how to enhance your resume, how to enhance your LinkedIn profile, how to send a thank you note after each interview. Uh, they will help you through all of this. And then um, I remember after every interview that I've done, I'm gonna go to career services. At that time there was a uh, Tara and also Kara uh, still here. They're gonna basically you know, go through with me about my application, my thank you note, 
my uh, LinkedIn connection, things like that. And okay, this is where you went wrong. This is where uh, this is what's right. Then you need to do it like uh, the next time you apply. So those things. Uh, it keeps me learning of how to enhance my professionalism and my career search. Uh, and the third one is the industry expert that they have over here. So. Um, for the past two years, I think I've been to countless industry expert career service, uh, career panels. So what they do, uh, they bring experts from the industry that you want for, so for example, I'm really interested in supply chain. They bring people that work at Ankelseria, they bring people that work at Shell. Um, and then they talk about, oh yeah, this is how the supply chain works in their company. Uh, this is what people, uh, this is what, uh, the kind of people that they're looking for. And that's how I got my first internship actually before I started at Simer. Uh, there was a panel, um, they talked, and then after the panel finished, I talk to the career services and I say, I'm really interested in this company, I'm really interested in the speaker, can you connect me with them? Oh yeah, sure, let's go. And then. Um, the career services connect me with uh, the guy, and the next day I got the interview. So uh, it's really empowering to know that these people care about you. This is a very small, warm environment that wants you to succeed. And that's why I chose USD, and that's why I think you have to choose USD as well. <laughs> that is a good pitch. Um, so I think that with that, we have a representative from each of the different programs, as you guys can see. So feel free to ask any questions here or from the live stream. So don't be shy. Don't be shy. Thank you. Um, I'm actually really curious about the Management Consulting Association. So what kind of activities do you guys actually do with it? Yeah, uh, good question. So. Last fall, we started out with a speaker series. So what we did was we brought in speakers from uh, Accenture, Deloitte. Uh, we had a local consulting company called Huron Consulting, which is healthcare consulting. They came in. Um, and we had a weekly series every Friday. We brought them in to speak to the association. And uh, it was a great way for us to really learn about uh, what actual consult consultants do day to day on the job. So uh, it was a good. Uh, intro, and then that built up to a, uh, we had a, a larger event with uh, the, the entire program. I think almost 60 people came out for this one, but we had Mark Costantino come out, and he wrote the book Case in Point, which is uh, the Bible for case interview preparation. And he did a, a whole seminar, three hours, and then on Saturday did one-on-one -on -one interviews with us to actually practice the case interview. So uh, fall was more of an education base. And then uh, we transitioned in the spring to doing more practical applications. So we had a, a consulting boot camp, eight hour boot camp, where we brought in uh, a Bain consultant, which is uh, one of the bigger companies. And she gave a, an entire day on case interview, fit interview, and uh, behavioral interview prep. So we did that. And uh, the rest of the fall, spring has been projects. So. Um, <coughs> We're actually trying to apply the skills we've learned. So we actually have consulting engagements with companies in town and uh, some nonprofit projects that we uh, have connected with uh, through through Net Impact, and uh, th that has really helped out. And and we've really spent the last few weeks just refining consulting uh, skills, so case interview, fit interview prep, uh, because the next uh, process here is in the fall. Will be the hiring season, so. And that's, that's actually one thing I wanted to point out. So um, two years happens really quickly in an MBA program. So you're going to start in the fall. And by, I think it's January, right? You're looking for internships. So uh, really uh, asking the questions and doing info interviews with people out there that have careers, like consulting, uh, that really helps out. Because uh, the sooner you figure it out, the sooner you can map your way, join the group you want to join, uh, and really make those connections because starting in the fall, uh, the hiring season starts for a lot of these bigger companies. So I didn't know that. I think there's a lot of people that don't know uh, in, the, in the summer you know, of my first year I need to get an internship or this, the fall of my second year I need to be doing job interviews. So um, that knowledge really helps out. And, and when you figure that out, that's, that's why the groups help out. Consulting Association is just one of them. But, um, yeah, we can talk more offline. Did that, did that really answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Question for Amy. So it shows that the course and students are not having an issue and they're having a good time. So what about the students? Do you see any issues? 
I'll comment on it. Um, so there is not a, like an explicit program, but if you want to get a mentor, uh, you can. So I was able to work with a program called, um, it's an, through the military, it's an ACP program that I was introduced by Career Services to. It's uh, American Corporate Partners, and they do uh, Fortune 500 companies with CEOs and executives at uh, those firms reach back and they do, uh, they do mentorship. So my, my mentor is a managing director at uh, Northrop Grumman and he helps out. So uh, that's just one example, but if you are interested in it, uh, they'll help connect you with the mentor. Just to add to that, um, you also can, um, as an evening student, everybody in your cohort works. So maybe not a formal mentorship, but somebody works in an industry where you're very interested in. Um, you're working with those students every day, so you know you can go talk to them and link up with them and learn about things that maybe skills that they have, and then you know they could even maybe help you meet people through that industry as well. So that might be another way to do it informally. One other opportunity you have, um, I can speak directly about supply chain events because that's in my concentration, but um, there are evening networking opportunities. So here we have Supply Chain Management Institute does a symposium every six months, and that's coming up, and, and that's all, it's for industry. Students are invited to attend as well. And there's an evening reception out here at the Garden of the Sea, and it's all industry people. So it's um, sort of, you know, just like cocktail hour, where you can just go and just kind of you know, mingle and chit chat with people and make connections that way. And I want to add a little bit to that. So I have a mentor that supposed to mentor me, and he's great. He's uh, one of their director in big consulting companies. Um, but I know for a fact that several of evening students actually got connected to my mentor by the career services because they're interested in my mentor. So basically, what I want to um, say is. Yes, the full-time um, has a mentor, like, okay, this is specifically, specifically for you, but the mentor list actually available, and you, if you think that this is, you know, a, a mentor that you want, someone that you want to connect with, it's available, and most of the time, we're actually happy to share the mentor with the evening students. <laughs> Towards my career, um, I would say the career services and the network that I built. So for from um, the events, from socializing with friends and things like that. Um, the career services because it helps to, I'm gonna look at the webcam right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so career services because um, it helps to, again, uh, as I explained before, um, I thought I knew uh, about how to write a good CV. I was wrong. Um, so they told me that how to write a good CV, how to connect with people, um, and they actually connect me with the right people. If I say, yeah, I wanna work in this industry, I wanna work for this kind of companies, and uh, this is the list of the companies that I'm interested, they're gonna look for the contact for you. And um, that helps me to navigate my career uh, nicely because I, I, just, I just have to find out what I want and they help to build the path for me and um, the rest is up to me. Um, and secondly, the network, uh, the, the friendship that I built, uh, the people that I've been introduced as uh, being a full-time MBA student. Um, my current job right now, I got it from a classmate. Um, a senior and full-time MBA student. Um, he worked at Symer. Um, so I've always been wanting to work at Symer just because, so uh, at DHL, I was um, covering a technology industry, uh, a tech industry, high tech, something like that. So I wanna you know, experience how it feels to work in high tech companies. So Symer is always on top of my list. Uh, and then I talk with people, I talk with my career services, and of course I submitted my resume and things like that. But you know, at some point, as um, Gina has explained before, network is your biggest um, tool to actually move towards your career. So I talk with uh, this guy, 
and I can't play what I wanted and why I want to join at Simon and things like that. The next morning, uh, he emailed me, Ira, I just talked to my boss, um, expect a call in the afternoon. I got a call for the interview. So to answer your questions, career services, and the network. Yeah, I actually uh, went to Shanghai in January for a consulting practicum. So I do work full time, but I was able to take two weeks off and uh, it, was, it was great. So we did a consulting practicum with WD-40, uh, big company here that's actually headquartered in San Diego. Uh, we spent, the week before, we actually got to go meet with the CEO um, of WD-40 before we went over there. And uh, we went over there and analyzed uh, key performance indicators for distributors in the country. So uh, it was really high impact. Uh, we got to talk to the country manager over there and uh, yeah, it was great. I mean, everything Scotty said about the international stuff is available to the evening MBAs if you can work it into your, your schedule. Yeah, most of the practicum, I would say it's almost split 50-50 between evening MBA students who get the time to get off and IMBAs because we're required. Um, as far as full-time MBA, uh, generally that's not an option, but you would have to speak to the advisors about that. But uh, it is open to, full, to uh, evening students and in fact, most of them do these things, so absolutely. I also went to Hong Kong in January, so um, I think just prioritizing your MBA program and knowing that, you know, saving that vacation with working and, you know, prioritizing that. I actually didn't do a practicum because I wasn't eligible first year, but I did a, um, a global supply chain class, and uh, the professor paired us with a lot of, like, industry leaders over there and brought speakers in and took us to the airport and saw the cargo planes and took us into China to do manufacturing and stuff. So it was a really good experience. And it's short term too. So. Just to add on that too, to me that was such like a key part of this program, the way I made friends is, yeah, you can sit in class with people and work with people, but when you travel with people and you're going out at night and going on tours during the day or working during the day, I mean, you really are just immersed with these people and I mean I have friendships now that are just stronger than anything I've ever had because of those experiences you know because we've gotten lost in weird cities and things like that and it's it's exciting and it's fun so to me the, the camaraderie you build is very important with your classmates and with the people they put you in touch with you know we did the um, practicum with uh, other students from uh, local university in Rio de Janeiro and I was talking on WhatsApp with one of them last night. Like, we're always in touch. I mean, I have friends just in every odd corner of the world now, it seems like. So it's fun, except when you're getting messages at 5 in the morning because of the time difference. But yeah, take the good with the bad. So for people who wants to take full-time MBA, it's actually an option as well. Um, I have a, a friend in my cohort that always, um, he always goes with the IMBA folks. So we never seen him. Uh, Along the we kind of adopted yeah. him. Yeah, <laughs> basically he's like, I am gay. <laughs> um, yeah, we always diss him about that because, yeah, it's an option as well. Um, uh, in fact, uh, he was doing his internship with Gina in Turkey. Yeah, yeah um, we interned. Vince and I interned in Istanbul. We went to Berlin, Istanbul, and did the course. Um, we did the course and then ended in Istanbul, and then we stayed and interned for a company who we actually got connected to because uh, the, I think it was... Uh, development director. It's a medical device company in Turkey. He's a USD alum. So we got connected to him and we interned for the summer in Istanbul. And if you heard about the riots, it was a crazy summer. <laughs> so the point is, it's always an option to join the IMBA team, whether you're an evening or full-time MBA student. Yeah, we had full-time people on our trip. As well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more questions? Uh, we'll go down. Uh, so Gina, you said you worked for Mm -hmm. Yes. So how have you been able to maintain that as well as your uh, internships abroad? Uh, are you a full time in that? And then... I am. Um, I just, I didn't start working until about two months ago. Yeah, so I've been a full time student the whole time. And then I just, I got the job a couple of months ago. And I'll tell you what. Everything, my whole life changed two months ago in a big way. <laughs> <laughs> Work for the better. But uh, yeah, just a little. Figuring out the balance there, but yeah, so. I 
have one. I will start. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest regret of my life, um, actually, uh, I didn't listen. Um, I think during the first six months of my uh, of me starting my MBA, so our uh, CPD for our so our career services in our CPD class always say. Deadline for internship, deadline for internship, apply before August. And we're like, we just start, like, why are we looking for jobs? We don't wanna, we don't wanna work in our CV, we don't wanna work in our LinkedIn, like, yeah, I mean, we can do that later. Yeah, that was the biggest regret of my life. I should have listened to them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any regrets, um, but I do have to say that there, there is a wealth of things that are available to you through, through this program. Um, you know, talking about panel series, you know, things I talked about, mentoring programs, apply, the CPD and applying for internships, student government and student club opportunities, just tons of things. And I'm um, grateful that I had the, the time and the opportunity to take advantage of them. So, you know, what I can say to that is that it's all there for you and you, it is, the onus is on you to take advantage of it. So really, like, you get this two years to just really knock it out of the park and, and really like take advantage of this opportunity. And here, it, it's all there for you. So I, there's, I, I did not feel like there was anything missing for me personally. And the professors as well, they're Absolutely. always available. Yes. I mean, uh, that's, I think that's one of the advantage of going to USD. Um, they have small classes, again, um, so the professor knows you. So you can leverage in their knowledge yeah. and their connections as well. Um, but yeah, I think also that's another regret. I think I have a lot of regrets now. I'm just gonna <laughs> stop. I think, uh, you just ruined Iris' yeah, day. <laughs> you, you also heard the dean talk like you know you might come into this thinking that you know exactly what you want to do and these are the courses that you want to do. So I think I think a really valuable experience that I've had so far is you know sitting with you know, whoever's gonna advise you and looking through all the classes that the MBA has to offer as well because, I mean, maybe something outside of your comfort zone is really something that you wanna do and it's just, you know, maybe you came in with one mind and then you're leaving with a completely different mindset. So take advantage of that early. I never learned how to surf and I'm really mad about that because I live in <laughs> San Diego and now I'm probably gonna wind up leaving without ever having done that. But. Uh... I guess it's worth it at the end of the day because I did work really hard for this, so I thought maybe I'd have more time to kind of hang out at the beach during the day, and that wasn't the case. Uh, if you ask Gina, I was always parked right in front of the library every day at like 7 in the morning, and you re really have to get there at 7 in the morning to get that spot. But <laughs> So every day, oh, there's Scotty's car right in front of the library. Um, you know, but I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you really want to take a two-year experience like this, and it goes so fast. And if you didn't work as hard as you possibly could, you'd regret it. So in that sense, yeah, I don't have any regrets from the academic side, from the school side, because I think I just let it all hang, I mean, to the extent where, like, I almost feel like I need, like, a break between when I start my job and uh, when I graduate here, just because I've literally given this everything I've had. And um, I, I feel proud of that. I, I can look back on it and say I just, I left it all on the table. And, to me, that was pretty cool. So it's been an excellent experience, and uh, I'm just so proud of this school. I, I just love everything about it, the campus, the, the faculty. Like Ira said, everyone, you know, the, camp, the faculty all knows your name, the connections with them. And having come from a lot of larger universities from my undergrad, you don't get that there. You don't, I mean, you get 500-person lecture halls. And here, you can really bond with the teachers and get individualized help if you need it or just meet for coffee, meet to hang out, and that's something that's, to me, pretty unique about this place, so. Mm -hmm. Another question? I'm looking at the webcam, hoping there are more questions. <laughs> yeah, what about the web people, yeah. hey? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Maybe last right. one. Okay. Um, so, I'm sure we're all, you guys are all getting your MBAs with the same academic purpose to excel in your careers. Uh, but I think everybody's story is a little bit different, so I don't know if you guys are all going to answer this or not. But what is that last, um, that last source of drive that said, "All right, that's it. I'm doing it. Let's go." As far as going back to school. Yeah. Uh, so before I started this, I was doing. I was working for a construction materials. I was just telling Mike about this too. Uh, I was working for a construction materials manufacturing company in Chicago and doing inspections on buildings for. 
uh, the roofs in particular. So these union roofers would go up there, they'd put on this roof on this skyscraper, and I would go do the inspection. And that's what I did out of undergrad. So if you can imagine being a you know gruff 55-year-old Chicago union roofer, and some 22-year-old kid comes up and tells you you did it wrong, uh, I would get threatened to throw, be thrown off the roof about a, on a weekly basis, and I got really tired of that. Um, <laughs> no, but in, in all seriousness, there, that was, uh, I just kind of realized that the sector of that business I was in, the opportunities to advance weren't there unless I got my MBA to segue more into a corporate role from a field service role. So you kind of come to the realization that, you know, the time is right, you know, let's make a move and just, you know, you put your chips on the table and that was it. So for me, it was just kind of, I got really sick of uh, that whole tense scenario all the time and I, I knew it was time for a change and the opportunity was right. I was in, I was just, for myself personally, when I was ready for a career change, but I'd also kind of, I, I was in a rut. And um, like I said, I had, you know, 11 or 12 years I had worked at Nordstrom. I worked at the corporate office and, you know, did some different things. But I knew, you know, at that point, I'm like, all right, I've got to change my tra trajectory here. So I can just kind of keep doing this or I can, you know, really, I, what I'm using, the MBA is a springboard for me. So it's really that thing. It's kind of this two years jam-packed thing that's just going to, you know, put me up to the next level and start on a different echelon so that I can get. So instead of being over here, I'm starting over here and up here to go this way. Yeah. So I started my MBA uh, back in 2012. Um, at first, in my long-term uh, <laughs> career plan, I was going to do it in 2010. So I actually have been delaying it. Um, my, uh, so I finally decided, okay, this is it. I'm going to do my MBA. Um, because I came to a point uh, that basically I asked myself which one I will regret more five years down the road, not taking my MBA or keep uh, going to my career. Like, because it's hard, right? I mean, if you have a good job, you have a good career, you don't want to leave it because you're thinking like, oh, um, if I take two years off from this job, um, will I get better job after graduation? It's a bet. But then again, I ask myself, five years down the road, which one I will regret more? Not having my MBA or putting my career two years uh, on hold? And then at that point, I realized, you know, if you um, have the opportunity to take your MBA, uh, to take your uh, graduate degree, then you, you just have to take it because you will never know when you need it. On the other hand, the career is always there. You can always do uh, what you love after graduation. So that's, that's my uh, main drive. Uh, for me, it was a natural progression. I never saw myself in the military for 20 years, so after uh, five, six years, I knew I was always going to do it. Uh, USD was a nice target of opportunity because I'm stationed here. So it, it, I looked at all the other schools here, and uh, I like this one the most. I had a, a friend in the military that went here, um, and he told me you know, great stories, great classes, great instruction. So uh, uh, yeah, it was more of a natural step than a, a forced, I need to do it now. Okay, so uh, I want to thank you guys all for sharing your experiences. and. Um, Speaking of great classes, that's what's up next. So just want to leave you guys with a couple pictures from our study abroad this summer. So Paul in Rio. Um, and then these are our, it's kind of dark, but this is our whole class up on the hill in Hong Kong. So, and I guess you get a break and then we'll meet at IPJ 222 and 223 for the classes at 1145. Thanks. Thank you. Grazie mille. Thank you guys. <laughs>